nice fish. It's a nice fish. Got one. Oh, shit, it's <laughs> fell in the water. There she be. It's a cracking fish, <laughs> absolute cracking fish. I reckon we've got left another 20 hours, maybe a little bit more. I'm just gonna wipe off the last 20 hours and it starts from now. <laughs> Beauty. We'll start this episode now then, mate. Yes, it starts from now. I think it's time to explain the, um, the the big old deal that went on yesterday and the session just started off so so badly to the point where it was like I just feel like give it up so first of all we were sitting there for quite a while and uh, we noticed that they was actually quite active on the top I had three zigs out there they weren't touching it realized that I had some surface fishing stuff in the back of my van and Jamie the cameraman said, um, why don't you stick a control float out there? I would. So I did. And it didn't take long to get them feeding. And I hooked into a fish. It kited to the left. I was playing it. And all of a sudden the line went, ding. It went slack. So I reeled it in. And I lost literally probably about, I don't know, two, two or three, well, two foot. Uh, of my hook link, so the line actually snapped between the float and, and, the, uh, and the hook itself, which is worse than a hook pull, um, but out of my control. So with that, I did think at that point that I may have not, I may have to swim out a little bit because I didn't really give them time to feed confidently, and normally they shy off. But. They did continue to feed, and I managed to hook it to another one. Same for the game, playing it, duh, duh, duh. camera's rolling, all excited. Boom, that one went. I was like, no, two fish. I can't remember the last time that I've lost two fish. So, reeled that one back in again. Line snaps again uh, between the float and the hook link. So, it's obviously a dodgy batch of line. So then I decided, right, I'm taking all of, of the um, of the fluorocarbon that I was using the surface fishing line and tried to catch them on the top just using straight through mono off, off the reel. And they knew that, they knew them baits out there had, um, yeah, had a hook on them uh, with that mono. They could see it, they was eating everything around it. So it just goes to show you, you know, the line does make a massive difference, particularly on the surface uh, with, with carp feeding. So, with that, I've got one rod out there on the bottom. That one went. Played into that one, went into a weed bed, out in the weed bed. Again, camera's rolling. Got it halfway back. Slack. I'm like, no, not again. Three now. This is three fish I've lost in a row. But this is the worst one because when I did actually bring it in, my not untied from the swivel to the lead clip. So that's my error. Um, I've done a amateur move there and done a insufficient knot. So that's my fault. I am fuming now. I've, I'm kicking myself on tail. All I can think about is losing particularly the last fish, all three of them, but the last fish more. So that was the ordeal. Then it changed. I 
changed all my rigs, changed all my hooks. I started from fresh. I've had a few fish now on um, on, the, on these rods, so I stripped a load of line off. So so now I'm, I'm having a fresh start. Rod went, got the first one. That broke the back. Last night, coming into first thing this morning, I had that lovely, lovely common mid 30. Got myself a common. So, I had this one just before sunrise. But wait till you see the next one. Back to the depths of the lake. Next one. So this uh, this donkey of a of a mirror went 41 pound 12 ounce. It was actually flittering between 41 12, 42 2, um, and it is the first spotlight 40. But it's not my first 40 out of this lake. Uh, this is my third 40 out of this lake, and this lake is Manor. And again, it's produced the goods. It's one of my favourite lakes in the complex. Um, this one and St John's. I really, really like the way now that there's a booking system on this lake, along with their new lakes at Tar Farm. It just makes it a lot easier. I'm coming from quite a way away, so I can literally now book up and know that I can get a swim from 10 o'clock in the morning for the duration of my period. Um, and the swim that I want, but the only problem is it does take a little bit of watercraft out of it. But if you do your homework, and you know the venue, you can work out what areas of the lake fish better during certain times of the year. Um, but fish move around, so they, they will move around the whole lake all year round. But uh, I've ended up lucky with this trip, and it's about time because, yeah, I wanted a 40 live on camera for so long, and it's finally, finally happened. And pff, I've got nothing else to say. Twelve hours left. Yeah. Well, as it's gone a little bit quieter now, uh, that sun's really come up and um, yeah, it's beating down and it is really, really hot. Uh, so good time to talk about what I've actually been doing for this trip. So I've, I've done quite a lot. I've fished off the surface, I've done zigs, I've done hinge stiff rigs, 
I've done solid bags, I've done KD rigs over a baited area. Um, I finally, finally found an area um, out there, which is nice and clear. Weed all the way around it at um, about 16 and a half wraps, just over. And it was one of the areas that I introduced quite a bit of bait to uh, when we first got here. And true to nature, I always find with the baited up areas, they seem to move on after about 12 hours um, and then they can really, really start you know, feeding very, very confidently uh, from that area. And I suppose it's the same as you know, when you surface fish. If you're throwing dog biscuits out there, you see the odd one picking up the bait bit by bit, then another carp comes in and then they start getting a little bit more competitive. Before you know it, they're into a feeding frenzy and then basically they don't care what's around them. They're trying to scoff up everything before everything else. Now, that's no different on the bottom of the lake. The only difference is you can't physically see it. So the principle's the same. You'll pick up fish, but after a long period of time with bait being out there, the fish start getting competitive. And like I say, what you see on, what they do on the surface with the dog biscuits, they do that on the bottom to your spotted area. So you can have multiple takes and three, the three fish that I've had have come from that spot out there. Um, two on that rod and one off the middle. I was fishing one rod out there first of all, actually on that baited area. After the first fish, I put two rods onto it and then I left one out there on the zig because they were still up in the upper layers out there. Nothing happened with the zig on this, on this, um, this trip, but the zig on many of occasions has yeah, got me out of trouble many a time. This time it hasn't all come off the bottom um, so yeah that's the tactics but um, it's a bit hot now and they seem to have slowed down a little bit there's a lot of cotton come off the uh, the goat's willow there across the lake which is now sticking onto the line so it's really hard to sink the line because it's getting caught up they don't seem like they're on the feed at the moment and this time of year they're due to spawn at any time and with these temperatures the way they are maybe they've got something else on their mind and they may be getting ready to have a bit of a thrash around if they do it's going to cut this episode a little bit short but hopefully we can get another one before we go and i'd really like to get one off the top if i can get them going again lost two off the top at the start if i can finish it with one off the top at the end that'd be yeah brilliant I've just gone over to that corner and there's um, some fish in there and I really want to get one off the top so I'm going to try and put some wrongs right and go and see if I can wangle one out in this last uh, hour or two I've got left. That's a nice little pack, but are any of you hungry? That is the question. Turn, 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 turn. Come on. Turn. Ah. They're flanking. They're flanking. Come on, the corner there. They're really. Drag snacking on the reel, so you need to use the bait runner. Jesus. Oh, that's actually quite a nice comment. He's knackered. Oh, 
Nice and gentle. Come on, you can do this. Jesus. I'm gonna run that battery on the GoPro on it. Head up, head up. Yes. Let's have a look at this. Well, there we go. I'll start this session off with losing two off the top and I was determined to get one off the top before I went. And look at this, 35 pound, just under, 34, 13 it was. But that's it, that's a wrap. I'm happy with that. Until next time, see you again soon. One more look. Look at that. Absolute stubborn.